Hello guys and welcome to Entrepreneur Mommies. I am your host, Tiffy T, the Resale Queen. Uh, this is a special episode. Uh, the name of this episode is going to be called A Coronavirus Proof Business. So we had this interview in the crates that we wanted to put out in a series, but we felt that this particular interview may help some, some of our listeners because... This is an interview with Dari Allen. She is a voice actor, and she works from home. That's a, a way that she takes care of her family. She does have a regular 9-to-5 job that she enjoys, but she really does well with her voice acting. And she is launching a course today, actually. And she is also giving out some freebies to our listeners. So click those links in the description box if you're interested. So without further ado, we're going to play our interview with Doree Allen. Thanks, guys, for coming back here for Entrepreneur Mommies. As we spoke about earlier, we have a very special guest. And our guest's name is Doree Allen Neves. Now, Dari has a very, very good uh, side business, full-time business that you guys could really uh, listen up to what she has to say, and you might be able to mimic yourself. She uh, has a course coming out, but she also has free resources that you guys could use uh, to look into into this business. So Dari, thank you for coming on to Entrepreneur Mommies. Hey, Tiffany. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm excited to spill it. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into a little bit of, of, your, of your business, uh, can you just give us like a little bit of background about yourself? Oh, sure. Of course. So um, as you mentioned, um, I do have a side hustle, but um, I still work full time. Um, I actually work from home now, um, but I didn't start off that way um, as a technical writer. And I've been with my company actually for 21 years now, which is like shocking because nobody my wow. age has been anywhere for 21 years. Like this is the longest relationship I've ever had. <laughs> so <laughs> I do that full time because I am I am good at writing, but I've also done things other things on the side through the years. You know, I have a podcast um, that I've been running for five years now. Um, I'm also the author of three self help books, uh, and I'm a certified life coach. So I have dabbled in different things over the years that are pretty complementary to each other. They're not too far fetched um, from each other, but that's kind of the trend that we're in these days, you know, especially people that are a little younger, like yourself is like, I'm, I'm not going to be limited and tied down to one thing. I can do different things. I can do things from home. I can do things, you know, I, right now uh, I'm a single parent. I have a teenage daughter. Um, I'm a widow. And um, I just feel like you don't have to limit yourself to um, just doing one thing. If that doesn't satisfy you, you can dabble in other things. You don't have to necessarily commit to something and forsake everything else as far as, um, you know, any entrepreneurial passions that you may have. You don't have to limit yourself if you have children. Um, you know, it's a balancing act no matter what. I don't really think that there's such a thing as a perfect work-life balance, but I do believe that when you are doing things that, you know, fulfill you and your spirit, that your children feed off of that. You know, just like if you're unhappy, your children feed off of that. So I think it's important, and you probably talked about this in previous episodes, it's important for women to not feel guilty about pursuing their passions and still being a mom and, and maybe even a, a partner. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me right quick. I'll just stop there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, thank you uh, for all that. You know, uh, a lot of our listeners and actually myself and Nikki included, we, we are moms and it's sometimes, uh, people think, Oh, that's all that we can do. And mm -hmm. we just go to work, come home, make dinner <laughs> and then turn into the personal maid. And that's our life. But I, I know I love for me, I, for, I, 
I've, I'm in, in, uh, in the, uh, the forties now. And I have, for me, I had to have a revelation probably about in my mid thirties, like, you know what? I need to start doing what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah. it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes you figure it out early. Sometimes you figure it out in the middle, but sometimes you might figure it out later, but whenever you figure it out, it's so great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's a new awakening. Yes. And I think it's also, you know, like you said, you're a single parent, you have a teenage daughter. Um, it gives a very good example for our kids. Yes. You know, uh, I, I have noticed, like I have a, actually have a 22 year old and he came to me uh, and said, I want to start selling video games, which is something that I was like, wow, why do you want to do that? He said, mom, I've been watching you sell stuff and you told me you sell what you know. And he was like, I know video games. And I was like, mm. oh, wow, you've been watching me this whole time. Yeah, they <laughs> like, watch us. They learn like, from us, good or yeah, bad. Yeah. Yes. And so that, that's really, wow. And what is the, the name of your podcast? My podcast is called Kicking It With Doree. There's no G. It's like kicking it. Like you and I are from an era where we used to yeah. actually say that on a regular basis and I'm bringing it back. <laughs> so yeah. And uh, I started that in 2015. It's a personal development podcast for women. Um, there are some men that listen to it, but I cater to the ladies mm -hmm. and we talk about, you know, different things that affect us as women. Um, it, it, it sometimes goes to entrepreneurship, but a lot of times it's more of the personal things, the emotional things, the relationship things that we deal with. And um, I used to have a long time ago, uh, a blog where I talked about, you know, being single and, and, you know, all these different things that I was going through, maybe depression. Um, I was re I relocated a couple of times, just various things that affect us as we move through life in this journey. Um, and, you know, nobody is self-actualized. So even though I'm a life coach, it doesn't mean that like my whole life is entirely perfect and nothing ever goes wrong and I have all the answers. Um, and so it's kind of like a thing. I like being able to share my realness with people because I know they can relate. I know I'm not alone. If I say that, you know, I feel lonely or I'm, I'm stressed about something that's going on with motherhood or whatever, I know there's a ton of people that can relate. And so mm -hmm. podcasting to me is like a new venue, a new way of being able to do that. Um, if, you know, I don't feel like writing or, you know, maybe people don't feel like reading. <laughs> yeah, but everyone reads nowadays. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I always say audio is going to be, is always king. Even if they watch videos, they can walk away from it and still hear it. Yes. Yeah. So let's talk a just a little bit about the, the voiceover work that you do. And you said this is really a side hustle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, when I started doing podcasting, voiceover was always in the back of my mind. People had always suggested it to me. Maybe there's someone that's listening right now thinking, you know, I've been interested in that, but I have no clue. It's such a mystery that covers that um, and, and what you should do. Um, I remember the beginning of 2015, I was promoting one of my new books that was getting ready to come out. And I was on my friend's blog talk radio show. And it just so happened that she had a co-host. So I knew her, of course, but I didn't know her co-host. And what happened was when we got off of that, um, it was like, a, it's a relationships book. And once we got off of that call, immediately her co-host, who's a man, he, he called me and he said, I absolutely love your voice. And I have a show that I do by myself. Would you be willing to read my intro and outro? I'll send you a script and you can record it for me. I, w I absolutely love your voice. And I, I'm saying it really quick right now, but this man was gushing over me. Like he's married and stuff. And I'm just like, okay, now calm down. But, <laughs> but he really was in love with my voice. And we had never met or anything since then. We've met and we've done different things together. Um, but it's like really interesting that that's how initially it started. And then I, I, I have a YouTube channel where I talked about how I got started and I completely forgot about this story that I'm telling right now. Um, so this is not something that I've ever like shared, <laughs> shared recently. Um, but yeah, and I recorded it for him. 
And, you know, I didn't get paid or anything. I just did it as a favor. And I was like, okay. And then later on down the line, I started maybe like six months later, I started my show. And um, I just got used to interviewing people and recording and outlining and scripting and all that good stuff. But um, it wasn't until the following year, 2016, when I really got serious about it. Um, At that time, I was living in Atlanta and a friend of mine started a meetup called voiceover city and he started it was like maybe i don't know the meetings were like not far from my house at all maybe like 10 minutes away from my house which is a big deal in atlanta because it's spread out and it takes forever to get anywhere around there and um i didn't go to the meetup but i stayed in touch with him he and i were friends from a organization called toastmasters which helps you gain confidence in public speaking and i had confidence in public speaking i just needed to get out of the house because i work from home so i needed to be around some adults during the day and um long story short he ended up launching the biggest voiceover conference in the world. It's now in its eighth year. It's called VO Atlanta, and it runs every year in Atlanta at the end of March. So um, I'm actually going to be speaking there for the first time this year. Um, but it's like getting connected to him and all of those vendors that offer classes and coaching and all these things that really opened up my world. But it started off from me just simply launching a podcast and getting used to uh, hearing the sound of my voice and getting comfortable with that, which is kind of a big hurdle for some people. I've, I've heard lots of people talking about how they really don't like the way their voice sounds or they really don't know if that they're, they're well suited, even though other people compliment them. They don't know if they're well suited. They don't know about the mystery of VO. Um, so that's kind of how I got started in it. And um, many, many years after I first, you know, had heard of it, um, but just settled down from my book and stuff because I really wanted to be able to focus on that. You know, writing a book is such a huge undertaking and I had already done it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, let me not pursue multiple side hustles at the same time. Let me just focus. And so finally, when I finished the book and all that, then I felt like, okay, now I can devote some attention to this new venture. Okay. So really it just kind of started with, someone noticing your voice and saying, you have to do this for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. He wasn't taking no for an answer. (laughs) (laughs) So, wow. So really, you know, an everyday person could, could possibly pick this up. Of course. Of course. Now I, I did that for him and I just did it the way he wanted. And I recorded it a couple of times until it sounded the way he wanted it to sound. But, um, of course, as you continue to get into the industry, network with people, take classes and, and, and go to conferences, you learn more and more and more. So um, I feel like sometimes when people want to start a new venture, it can be really overwhelming because they're like, what about this? And what about that? And how do I, and it's like, you've got to take the baby steps. You know, you've got to crawl first. Most, there are kids that just start walking without crawling, but they're pretty special. They're unicorns. You know, most people have to crawl first. Um, so don't feel like when you think, even if it's not voiceover, maybe it's something else that you're really interested in and you're like overwhelmed thinking about, well, how am I ever going to do this? And I got to, I got to do these forms and I got to sign up for this. And how much money is this? It's like, take the baby steps, you know, we're in the beginning of 2020 and hopefully even though, you know, we're only in the first quarter, hopefully you haven't abandoned those goals and things that you wanted to do this year. And if this is one of them, I feel like you can continue to take those baby steps and just reevaluate, you know, every so often, maybe every other week, you know, at least once a month, reevaluate, you know, your progress. What is the one task or the one step, the one action I can take Mm -hmm. toward this? Maybe I can register for a class or maybe I could just, you know, research, you know, something that I could do, or maybe I could decide I want to go to a conference, but I can't go right now. Maybe in six months I can afford it. So let me start budgeting, you know, whatever little small task that you can take toward whatever that goal might be, because we still have the rest of the year left. But as you know, Tiffany, it's moving real fast. It sure is. (laughs) Yeah. So if I'm, if I was thinking about this, what type of class would I really take? Is that something that like a local community college would have or are there professionals that have classes? There are some here and there community colleges that offer classes. Um, I don't really, 
that that is not uh, what I did at first. You might be able to find that. I have actually looked for classes at community colleges for for other types of things and kind of gotten lost in their websites and stuff and mm. gone down a rabbit hole and I don't know what their system is, right? Mm. Um so what I did was I there's actually a few different what I would call VO schools that you could oh. go to if you want something that's structured. Okay. Um but what I would actually start with first of all is if you use Facebook, if you don't, then you can just hold on for a second and I'll give you something else. If you are on Facebook and you're willing to at least participate in groups, you know, maybe not necessarily okay. like talking to all your friends, but participating in there's certain Facebook groups that are really good about networking and education. And you can learn a lot just by searching the group, especially if the group has been around for more than a year. Because so many questions that we get as voice actors are very, very common. They're very repetitive. How do I start this? What do you do with that? And that's one way to start off. If you're talking about training and classes, whether you're on Facebook or not, um, one, one of the first places that I recommend, which is kind of, quote unquote, a VO school, is called Global Voice Acting Academy. And that's GVAA for short, but it's Global Voice Acting Academy. They have all kinds of classes and resources. You can become a member, I think, either, I don't know if their first month is free or if you like, you know, there's some kind of discounted or free mm -hmm. thing that you can do when you join and you can get involved in classes and groups where you can work with other coaches and things like that and kind of get your feet wet with reading scripts and, and all the basics of voiceover, right? Um, what else can you do? You can sign up for lists. There's different people that run classes all the time. Um, I'm not personally going to promote anyone else's list, but there's a lot of voice actors like me that get so many questions that they just decided that they're going to, you know, make, you know, some kind of cheat sheet or something that kind of gives you an overview. Um, I'll tell you what I would not do to start off. Okay. is to just start reading things and putting yourself out there on certain low budget websites. Um, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of controversy about sites like Fiverr. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it causes a lot of discord in our community because it's a whole part of the gig economy. You know, you've got Upwork, right. you've got Craigslist, you've got Fiverr and so on. And those types of places are kind of like like there's no barrier to entry. It's not a low barrier. It's no barrier. Anyone can make, you know, a profile page and be like, okay, I'm going to do this and start selling stuff. And whether it's $5 or $25. And really when you're a professional voice actor, there is nothing. And I mean, nothing that you're doing for $25. Nothing, not, okay. not even what, not even what I did. I did what I did in 2015 was a favor. I wasn't even like focused on VO at that point. I was focused on my book. But if you're actually charging, there is nothing you should be doing for 25 bucks um, or, or whatever, you know, the fiber rates are right now. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I recommend GVAA. I recommend getting on Facebook groups. And here's another thing that anyone can do. And lots of voice actors do this uh, when they're starting. Um, just listen to the things that you enjoy. Do you, is it, is it TV promos? Is it movie trailers? Is it commercials? Whatever you like and you think, oh yeah, I could do that. That would be cool if I did that. Mimic what you hear because when you mimic it, you are mimicking the trends of what is already being hired. If the person is on a national commercial that's playing 85 times a day, that person is making some serious coin because not only was that voice actor paid for doing it that one time in a session, but they're paid for the usage of continuously having that, that, that uh, ad played on you know, the TV or the radio constantly. So um, mimic what you hear um, in you know, those various, you know, whether it's video games or uh, cartoons, whatever it is that you are interested in voicing, mimic what you hear. Um, and then put your own spin on it. Play around with it. You can take everyday household things like soup cans or, 
or, or cereal boxes or magazines, okay, and read them aloud. Pretend that you're a news reporter. Pretend that you're doing a commercial, whatever it is. Read it different ways. Get used to playing with your voice and, and, and being creative. So part of it is mimicking what, it, what someone really did. And part of it is doing your own thing by just reading things. Maybe you're driving down, you know, maybe you're not driving, maybe like you're in the passenger seat and you're <laughs> on the highway and you're reading billboards. Read the billboard out loud. How would you read it? You know, the, the, yeah. that's the way that you play. And people often will say when they're doing their famous keynotes and stuff, well, you know, when I was five, I started watching this, you know, cartoon and, you know, I always wanted to play with these characters. Just think about things that, you know, you might be interested in doing and then pretend. It's okay, even though we're grown, to pretend <laughs> sometimes, you know. It's not the wrong with pretending. Yeah. Those were fun times when we were kids. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You got to escape, you know, yeah. some of this harshness of life and go back and be a kid again. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like this could really be quite lucrative. Yeah, it can be, um, depending on how you want to charge. There's various ways that people find uh, voiceover work. Um, you can find voiceover work by using uh, what we call online casting sites or pay to plays. And a pay to play site is basically something like if you ever Googled voiceover ever, you're going to find probably the first five or six uh, entries are going to be pay to play sites. Things like voices.com and voice123 and VO Planet and voiceovers and all, all these other websites. Like there's a zillion of them and they all have voice in the titles of them. And the reason it's called pay to play is because you're paying either a monthly or yearly fee in order to receive auditions into your email inbox. That's one way that people, when they start off, um, like to get um, their gigs. Um, that is not a mandatory thing. You don't have to do that, but it's just very common. Um, so if you're willing to pay, you know, 300, 400 bucks a month for hopefully, you know, getting some jobs, then you could do that. Um, another way, of course, is talent agents. Of course, the talent agents want um, people that are a little more seasoned in what they're doing, but that's another way people get jobs. And those those voiceover um, auditions and opportunities, 99% uh, of the time, they only go through them and they don't ever see the light of day on any kind of pay-to-play site. Um, another way, of course, is to find your own work. If you know how to do the research, you can find companies that need voiceover and market yourself to them with your own demos and samples of your voice because they're going to want to hear how you sound, obviously, before they take you on. Um, and then the fourth and final way that people find uh, voiceover work is from is from other voice actors. So whether you're networking on Facebook or at a conference in person or whatever, Maybe someone finds you on their website. That's a fifth way, actually. Um, if you have really good SEO and you have a website with that information, someone can find you. Um, but referrals are a big deal, you know, so it's okay. important. I think that networking piece is really important if you're on social media of any kind um, to befriend other voice actors because, you know, no matter how good somebody is, they can't do everything. And I don't care who it is. Right. Everybody can't do a man's voice, a woman's voice, a kid's voice, you know, high pitched, low pitched, whatever. There's nobody that can do everything. And so people, casting directors and agents rely on us to be able to refer to other people and say, you know what, I don't really have that skill. That's not my wheelhouse, but I know somebody mm -hmm. that does and they're vouching yeah. for you, you know? Look at that. Now, that's, oh, that's such great networking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You never know when it's going to happen. Sometimes when, you know, sometimes when you get into a Facebook group, you lurk because you're in like a zillion Facebook groups. You just <laughs> don't have the energy and the time to, you know, interact with every single one. But there are people that lurk and they pay attention. So if you decide to comment on something or put something out there and participate here and there, you know, people might not reach out to you immediately but they, they could very well save your information. Maybe they decide to send you a friend request or maybe they decide to start following you on Twitter or, or Instagram. And they're watching, just like ki our kids, what we were talking about earlier, they're watching us even if they don't say yeah. anything. People are watching you. And so if you just continue to do good work and not be a jerk, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not complain right. all the time, right. not be annoying, then, you know, people are going to be responsive to that, you know? Well, I must confess, I am a lurker in a lot of Facebook groups. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Me That's too. how I found you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I am a lurker because I like to uh, I like to check things out, 
And uh, what she just said there was, was very key about um, the way that you present yourself in a Facebook group. You just never know who's, who could be in that group just scrolling through and see something that you're yeah. talking about. And next thing you know, you, ha you have a gig from that. Yeah. And the voice actors aren't just, not all voice actors stick with just that. There are voice actors that do on camera work. There are voiceovers that all voice actors that also do casting or work closely with casting or production companies or agents. So it's kind of like a multifaceted thing. It's, you know, most of the time voice actors don't hire each other, but th that referral thing is, is very key. And there's a lot of people that could be in the group that are, you know, one of those other roles, maybe they're an agent in New York City or something, and, mm. they're, and they're looking and they're watching to see what's going on. You know, you and I are African American women, you know, and you would think that that wouldn't be like a unicorn commodity, but it totally is. Uh, uh, so, so just by having your picture, okay, oh, wow. like yeah. not, maybe not you and your significant other. I know a lot of people like to have the kissy pictures as your profile, but a picture of you where they can see that you're a black woman or, or whatever, you know, your ethnicity is that also could be a key factor where people will seek you out, you know? Wow, that's no another great point. All right, you guys, we have just gotten a lot of information for, from Doree. So we're going to take a quick break, let you guys digest this, and then we're going to come right back, and we're going to talk about resources. All right, guys, thanks for coming back, listening to our sponsors. So we're going to uh, continue our conversation with Doree. Uh, so what type of resources would one need to even start thinking about this? Like what should they start budgeting for or looking into? Okay, I'm going to need to take a class possibly or network. Do I have to look into certain type of equipment, computer? Yeah, yeah. I actually, this is so funny because I actually like, as we're recording this, like two days ago, I posted a brand new video on my YouTube channel called Startup Costs. And I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but it's exactly to answer this question. It's perfect. It's, and it's only like maybe like 10 minutes. It doesn't take forever for me to give the overview. But um, basically, yeah, anytime you start a voiceover, anytime you start a business, period, as a freelancer or a side hustler, whatever you want to call yourself, there are some startup costs. And I don't even talk about like the, the legal things with the LLC and the bank account or any of that stuff, just right. like, the basic stuff to get the work done. Um, some people start off with a microphone. I, I was already a podcaster. So I had, um, when I started, I had a blue Yeti, which was like a hundred bucks and that was fine. I, I don't think you should stick with that long term, but just to get started, if you already have something that's, you know, kind of like that, um, that that's fine. It's a USB mic. It connects to your computer with a USB port. Um, and the actual kinds of microphones that we use for voiceover are usually large diaphragm condenser microphones, which is very technical, I know. But basically the point is, it's not a USB. <laughs> it connects a different way. Um, but if that's what you're working with to start off with, you know, you, you may not have like a whole lot of money to start off. Um, if you do something like, let's say you do a webinar or a class with a, a voice actor or GVAA or something like that, that might cost you like, you know, 20 or 30 bucks. Um, if you were to do a coaching session with a VO coach, it's going to cost you a minimum of $150 for one hour. So that one is a little bit steeper and you're not sure what you're going to get. So that mm -hmm. might not be the first thing you want to do. It can be, but mm -hmm. some people are kind of like, oh, I don't know about this. But if you want that one-on-one -on -one personal assessment of where you want to go with your business, and even if you're having doubts about if your voice is viable for VO, um, then maybe it is worth it to, you know, shell out 150 right off the bat. Um, Another cost, of course, we talked about conferences a few minutes ago. Um, mm -hmm. Most conferences um, that I've attended that um, involve focusing on voiceover are about $400 and up. Um, so it, it behooves you to learn about those conferences so that you can, if you decide to go maybe 
it's coming to a city near you, you can register early, of course, and get that mm-hmm. early bird rate or read, um, read up, read different blogs about reviews of what happened at conferences, which is one of my favorite things to do. If I've never gone to a certain conference before, I will almost always find a blog where someone was doing a recap and talking about what they learned and what it was like and, you know, whether or not they recommend going or whether they'll go again. Okay. And I do have, I actually have a two part, very intensive, uh, YouTube, um, video that discusses all of the different voiceover conferences. I think there's like 10 of them and, you know, the ones that I've been to and what I think and how you should prepare. So again, we're early in 2020. There's plenty of conferences left to attend if you just want to kind of get an overview of everything. And that face-to-face, in-person interaction, I think you can really get a lot of ROI um, if you're able to swing it. So um, that's definitely another place. But of course, that costs more than the the coaching and that costs more than the classes. So, you know, it's just up to you and you know, what you've decided to budget for. Um, when you get to the point where you're, you're done with your coaching and you're ready to have a demo, let's say you're going to do a commercial demo, it'll usually have about five or six different spots on it that showcase your vocal variety and showcase different kinds of commercials. So maybe you'll have a beauty commercial and a car commercial and a techie commercial and a, a mom, you know, choosy moms choose Jip commercial. Um, it'll showcase your range. You're talking about for to, to have that demo produced, you're talking about a minimum of two thousand dollars. But that's like further down the line. That's not like something you do right in the beginning, but it's just to give you an idea. And you know, when I created I'm I'm creating a course that um is actually going to launch in March. And I talk one of the things I talk about is doing things in a certain order and having a certain process because a lot of times when you are thinking about what does it take to start a voiceover business or how do I get started or what should I do first? And you Google it, you get so much information that it's really overwhelming. It can get frustrating. Um, People always, that's the first thing people always want to say, right? Is, Oh, just Google it. Just Google it. And sometimes it's not that simple. Sometimes Google is not the be all end all. And there's really more to research and there's, you know, so, I'm not going to just tell you to just Google it. I'm going to, I actually have like a resource guide that's curated where I've said, these are links that have really good information. And it's like, you can go straight to it, read what you need to read. And I, of course, I'm always available by email to answer questions and things, but it's like, kind of like what I wish that I had had when I was starting so that I could streamline the process and not waste a lot of time trying to figure things out. Okay. And uh, how does one get your resource guide? Well, I'm so glad you asked, Tiffany. You <laughs> could go to uh, bit.ly, uh, it's bit.ly mm-hmm. uh, slash Dere voiceover resource. I know that's long, but... Um, that's okay. We're going to have a link on it uh, in our description <laughs> box. But it's just so that, you know, anyone that's listening that may not have a, the the way to click on it, they can write it down quickly. Uh, yeah. It, but it's thank you for providing that. I think sometimes when you don't know when you want to actually pursue something, something as like a guide is very helpful so that you know what you're looking at. Right. And the yeah. things to consider. Yeah. Right. And it's, How to it's based on my experience. So it's not like I'm telling you something that I'm just making up. I actually, I was kind of reluctant to even make the guide or to make the course, to be honest, I made that, I made that guide about a year ago and just didn't really do anything with it because, um, you know, people would ask me, Oh, you know, what do you do? And da, 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 da. And, you know, and the DMS and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, instead of me just copying and pasting the same response to everybody. And let me just make one place where people can just grab it. And it's 14 pages. So there's a lot of information there. It's not like I'm just going to look at it. And then be like, oh, okay. And then move on. Like there's a, like, there's a lot of meat in there. Okay. And you provide this for free. Yes. Okay, guys. If this is something you're thinking about, <laughs> click on that link so you can get that resource guide. Uh, 14 pages. And I have a feeling it's not full of fluff. It's full of info. Uh, right. So that, that is, that's really great, especially for, for our listeners so they can take a look at that and, uh, decide, you know, if that's something they want to want to pursue any yeah. further, or if they know someone that they feel has a good voice 
and oh, yeah. they do that. Sure. They refer them uh, to this resource guide. So just kind of getting into what you've done, if you're allowed to talk about, is there anywhere that we could hear your voice? Well, I have, I don't, ha I have a, on my Kicking It With Doree YouTube channel, I do have a playlist of videos that I have done. I don't think that those names are going to necessarily pop out at you. Some of them are commercial. Some of them are e-learning. There's been some radio commercials that I've done. So those yeah. um, are obviously not on YouTube because there's nothing to look at with a radio. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, there are some things that I'm not able to share because they're right. internal. Um, my voice personally is like my number one um, uh, type of client is one that needs narration. So it's, okay. it might be e-learning, it might be corporate, and a lot of those things are internal and they're not things that are broadcast. But I have done some broadcasts. So my YouTube channel, uh, Kicking It With Doree, does have some uh, does have a playlist about what I've done um, and has, I have a playlist with demos and I also have a playlist called VO Mentor um, that gives, like we were just talking about startup costs um, mm -hmm. that I just did the other day, but there's like more than 10 videos about various oh, wow. aspects of VO and it's on YouTube. So, you know, it's free. Of um, course, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll put a link to that in our description box too. So everyone can, can link to that as well. So it, listening to your experience, it sounds like it's, you don't have to go out and try and be Hollywood. No, no, you don't have to. You, there's so many different ways that you can make money doing voiceover. You can do, um, you know, like the, the voicemails or the voice prompts, you know, you call the bank or whatever and it's <laughs> press one, press two. You could do that. You know, you can do audiobooks. Lots of people narrate audiobooks, and there's authors all over the place that are just, for whatever reason, not interested in reading their book aloud, but there's a whole lot of us that are. Um, so there's so many ways. It's not just, you know, things on the TV in Hollywood, like you said, that's VO. There, I mean, when you, when you get on the subway, you know, that's VO or the bus. Um, th there's just so many ways that we listen to voice and it's going to continue, you know, anybody, you know, got Alexa or Google home. I mean, it's the wave of the future, um, is voice. And I know me personally, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to texting. I don't even want to like text with my fingers. I want to just speak it. I just want to be like, look, all right, Google voice type, you know, and maybe there's a couple of words wrong, but for the most part, that's an efficient way. People want to hear voices. Even when you think about like your loved ones and stuff, you know, when you lose a loved one, you know, I was mentioning before that I'm a widow. One of the first things that I did after my husband passed was go through his old videos and, and, and voicemails mm -hmm. because that's what you miss the most about yes. people is, is their voice. And thank God, you know, you and I are podcasters and we, you know, we, we're, we're leaving our legacy. But yes. for those of you that maybe aren't, you know, go ahead and take the time, you know, you might even need to sneak it on the fly, you know, hit that memo on your phone and record yourself in conversations with your loved ones because there's so much that can be felt with the voice, whether you decide to do voiceover or not. It just really means something. There's a real connection that happens when we are either seeing and hearing or just hearing someone's voice you know you you hear the intonations you know if someone's smiling or if they're crying all through their voice wow that just a whole light bulb just hit while you were talking so really listen just listening to this i don't if this was something that someone was looking to get into you could possibly maybe do this from home Oh yeah, and you can absolutely do it from home. Okay, so you can do this from home. If you you don't have to worry about your attire. <laughs> no, you do not. No one's okay. going to see you. I'm in my closet recording <laughs> with you now, and this is where I record my voiceovers. This is my whole setup. I've got clothes all around me. There's pillows, there's clothes, blankets, shoes. Um, if you treat your space you know, in your environment and you've got the door shut and, you know, you've got everything in here, you know, you, you can make it work. People don't care what it looks like. They're not recording you on video. They just want your voice and, you know, what you bring to the table. Wow. So you're not going to like a recording studio 
I'm not, no. Oh, um, wow. There, now, sometimes with agents, they might ask you to. It sure. depends on what city you're in. It just might be easier for them. Um, but there's different ways, and I'm not going to get super technical about them right now, but there are different types of technical setups that you can have where you can, you can remotely connect directly to the engineer you know, in that city. So I can connect to, I have the ability to connect to a studio like anywhere in the world because of my setup. But most of the time when you're doing auditions and work, you're mm -hmm. just recording with your microphone connected to your computer. And then you edit it with the whatever audio recording software that you're using. And then you send that finished file, you know? Wow. Well, oh my goodness, you entrepreneurs that are listening to us, I hope you guys are taking down all this information because I just got in my head a whole nother business to start. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I was looking, you know, looking through because I do a little bit of research before a person comes in and then listening to you, I'm like, wow, you could actually probably just do this completely local. You don't have to travel, you know, and really... Uh, the that the amount of money that you like really talked about, honestly, you're investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're gonna make it back. Trust so you're me. making it back, you know, because uh, I I'm a I like going to conferences. I like going to seminars. Now I am a person where if the conference uh, I feel doesn't help me after I leave, I don't return. Uh, but it sounds like the, uh, voiceover conferences that, that you've been to have been helpful. Yeah, I think so. And you don't really have to go to a lot of them, you know, just pick yeah. one there. There's conferences that are huge and overwhelming for an introvert. And then there's some that are really small and they're not overwhelming. Um, you just have to, and, and that's what I talk about in, in one of those videos is how do you know which one to go to? Where are they located? How much does it cost? What should you consider? Um, but again, you know, you don't have to spend right out the gate, you know, four or $500 if you don't have that. You can start small, you can join those Facebook groups and start lurking and, and, and listening, social listening and, and getting information that way. Uh, and from shows like this where, you know, other voice actors are talking about their business. Wow. This is so amazing. I want to thank you uh, so much, Dari, for coming on our program today. Uh, and sure. I, thank you. And we will be providing uh, links in all of our descriptions. As you guys know, I, I always link everything up so you can see what we're talking about. So we will have a link to Dari's resource guide and to her YouTube and we'll also have her her website and everything like that um, in in our in our description boxes uh, for for uh, for the show today I just want to thank you so much for coming on uh, just listening I'm I'm wondering about certain things myself we're gonna uh, get on that list so we can uh, know about the about the upcoming course that you have <laughs> coming on Yes, come one, come all. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I'm doing it for you guys. Yeah, so I appreciate appreciate you coming on. You know, and uh, anyone that is interested, just just getting the your resource guide alone um, sounds like it's going to be quite helpful. Oh yeah, for sure. I believe so. And people, I think people love it. And you know. It, it just really cuts down on that overwhelm of, you know, just Google it, you know, cause yeah. that's not the answer all the time. Yeah. There's a lot of answers in Google, but they may not all be the right answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I can tell you for me, this was something that I never, I, I thought about, but never really put it together. And, you know, I, you're right about the whole Google. Uh, I, you know, just did a couple little bit of research myself and I was like, I don't even know where to start. I, so this is very, very helpful. So to all of our listeners, uh, please make sure you check out Dari's resource guide. We'll have the links below her, her website and her YouTube channel. I want to thank you so much, Dari, for being a guest on our program today. Is there anything else that you'd like to add for our listeners? No, I just want to say that you don't have to start big. You can start small to live big. Oh, listen to that. That's great. <laughs>
Thank you so much for being on our program. Thank you.